Hey, Fright Fest Television is back here, and of course we've got some of our favourites. They're in Fright Fest Glasgow with La Riva de Wang, and actually they're here with that too, plus their new film, Power of 3D. You're the first people I think we've heard at Fright Fest who's actually had two films <laughs> playing at the same time. All yeah. 13 editions? Yes. Wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty good going. Yeah, and of course yeah. we liked La Riva de Wang so much that so we put it on again. Yeah. Because it got, you know, people really liked it in Glasgow, so we thought let's put it on again. But you're actually here mainly, I think, for Power of 3D oh, for yeah. us. So. Go through the whole story. So while you were waiting for the uh, special effects to be completed on La Riva de Wang, you made another film because that's the yeah, way you are. We don't, yeah. we, don't, we don't know how to... We, we, we don't like to be still doing nothing. So while the, the company of special effects uh, were doing Wang, the, the, the creatures, uh, you say, what we, do we do now? Yeah, <laughs> what do we do now? And we, we, we think about a book that we read, uh, the, that we really uh, like the, the beginning of the book, but then we change uh, the, the story totally. And we write, the, we wrote this, uh, the, 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 this film in, in one, one month, month yeah. maybe, one month. Uh, right. And we... And we, we and we made power. Yeah, we, made we power. were um, we, 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 the, the idea. As a matter of fact, it's like we say, "Oh, we can't stay. We have to shoot. We have to shoot. Mm -hmm. What do we shoot?" And, and then we, we remember. Uh, I don't know if you remember Robert Zemeckis. Oh, of course. That is one of our favorite director. That when when he was shooting Castaway, he had to be waited for it one year to, to, to for Tom Hanks to get slim because you remember oh, the right, beginning of the movie right. is fat. Right. Then he gets slim, and he said, "What do I do now?" And he shot uh, "What Lies Beneath." Right. "What Lies Beneath" is a movie that Max shot just to pass yes. the time to wait for Tom Hanks to get yes. slim. He looks it, doesn't he? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's not the same for Paola. <laughs> <laughs> so we say, "Let's do like Bob." <laughs> right. Now it's very similar. I mean, all your films. I mean, they, you know, it's, it's one set. Okay, yeah. you've got yeah. you open power. Up. With like you know they're outside you know the the, the the guys in Rome blah 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 but it is but mainly end, one yeah. set isn't it I mean yeah. do you, you prefer that to be contained you know what it's like it, we noticed with Paola because it was the third in a row like that yeah but we don't know it's something in our subconscious I think I, I don't know there are two things in common in all our films uh, and it's uh, one set and somebody is prisoner mm. uh, it's captive it's mostly tied. In Piano di Chassetta, they are not tied because they are closing a lift. But I don't know, there's something about claustrophoby and captivity that probably of course, is the, in our brain, and maybe it's our psychoanalyst that should explain mm, it. Yeah. They're claustrophobic masochists, is what you're basically saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Claustrophobia porn. <laughs> the new <laughs> genre by the Monetic Brothers. <laughs> of course, I think that low budget needs maybe just one location, mm. few actors, so maybe, the, but we have something that we really like, this kind of stories, it's not just because of the budget, but because we really like to... But even as spectators, I think. It's yeah, even as spectators, mm. yeah. When we, when we see there is a new film, uh, you know, so... Uh, Borient. Borient. No, mm. we really like... No, it's very <laughs> Mm. Also, I mean, I mean, it's in 3D. Oh, I mean, yeah. you've never done a 3D move before. But did you actually want to try and experiment with that as well and think, how can I do this? Or was it just like purely commercial, an aspect? No, it's no. definitely no. experiment. Definitely experiment. Right. It's, a, it's still linked to the fact that we, we were doing this movie in, in, in a hiatus, can we call it? You know, in a, in a I, I don't know time frame that we had nothing to do because we waited. Oh, I see. Yeah. So I thought we thought this was... Oh, hiatus. The hiatus. Right. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I always read it. I never heard it. Oh, yeah. Like hiatus. <laughs> hiatus. Now I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, because it sounds Latin, so I said... Right. Uh, so maybe that's part of the fact we, we thought. Since we are preparing another movie that we are so convinced to, let's experiment. And uh, we, we like 3D, not... I noticed that not many of our colleagues like 3D. Uh, for mm. example, Nolan refused to do Batman in 3D. Uh, Even me, and we yeah. like it. Yeah. As a, a me, for me, when I see 3D on a, mm. it 
Kind of. One, yeah. yeah. Prometheus. You know. Yeah. Great. Right. Right. Oh. <laughs> great. That one of the greatest 3D editors. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and so we like 3D. The, the camera came out, the first camera that does 3D in a simple way. Right. Because we like our shooting to be simple. We like too much complication on set. So we say this is the good occasion. Uh, so was experimental, especially. Mm -hmm. Then it became also commercial because we noticed later that distributor, for example, in Italy, we never had such a wide release. Mm -hmm. Now we are asked for release, theatrical release in Russia, which never happened to us, it's just because of 3D. So 3D definitely has a, has a commercial strength, but that was not the main reason. And, and I have to say the first maybe three days of shooting, we were pissed and we say never again. <laughs> because this 3D is fucking difficult, can I say that? <laughs> it's damn difficult, uh, bloody difficult. Um, and, but on the fourth day, we st you started getting into the, the functioning. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, it's fun to shoot in 3D. And I, I think we're going to do it again. Yes. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Uh, the right movie. Um, yes, the right movie, maybe. Because um, you said on the stage yesterday that you know you found creeping through the corridors, yeah. especially downstairs, yes, and stuff, that was what you really wanted to do. You yes. wanted to bring that effectively yeah. into it. Yeah. I think it gives a lot to the claustrophobia because uh, if you if a corridor right. becomes like the, the continuation of the theatre, right. it's like all the audience is closed with Sabrina in, inside the, the, the right. basement. So yes, I think this is the right movie. For example, now we are going to shoot a, a cop movie that takes place mostly in the streets. And I don't think 3D mm. is the, the right solution for that kind of movie. But another contained movie, I think 3D... I think, yeah, think even about because it. Uh, often uh, the 3D for uh, American uh, films uh, is, is uh, really... Fa edited very fast, uh, so it's something strange, you know. But I think the power is a uh, slow film, so you can absorb it, yes, and that no. is better, it's much better to do In fact, like Prometheus, no, yeah. Prometheus is, is a, it's not a um, action movie, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, uh, it's the best thing is maybe uh, if you do a cop movie uh, with uh, cards, it's your eyes. Uh, yeah, I think it's very get tired. Very hard, yeah. Yeah. Get tired, yes. Now, I mean, one of the themes that comes through power, of course, is like, like I mean, you know, Sabrina's a hostage. She's been, she's been yeah. abducted. In fact, if people yeah. stay through the credits, they will see the very moment yeah. from which she is abducted. So, and then, you know, it's like, then, but then it sort of always becomes like a Stockholm syndrome where she can't reach. She becomes to rely on the only person. So that's what yeah. you actually move into in the second part of the film. Yeah. But that she doesn't really want to break away because she yeah. doesn't know anything. Else. She's scared of breaking away, yeah. I think. I think it's um okay, that's the main message of the movie. A message is not the right word. It's like a study on what a mind can become in that situation. And I think uh, it's not even Stockholm syndrome, it's like more. Because Stockholm syndrome technically is when the the hostage falls in love. Mm. And I think in this case, because she was a baby when she was kidnapped, it's more than love is a universe. It's like the this reality. man, this man is a universe. And this man told uh, stories that if you think about it's like religion in our world. She told her that there's an ogre mm. of a boogeyman <laughs> outside the, the basement. And if she goes out, she will be killed. And she believes it because it's the only person that talks to her. Uh, so I think it's uh, while Stockholm Syndrome talks about love, here we're talking about dependence. I think she hates him in a way, but she thinks is the only he is the only way she can survive. Mm -hmm. So that's why when he dies, I don't know if I'm spoiling it too much. <laughs> she, the villain dies at the end. Nothing, <laughs> nothing surprising. She. Flakes, you know, she really don't know what to do. Well, her world collapses. Yeah, well. collapses yeah. totally. Yeah. So that's I'm speaking about Sabrina. It's played by Francesca Kutica, yes. who of course is the lead in Larry Bode Wang too, and she's also in the film you produced, yes. Closed Circuit Extreme. So I mean, 
Why? Well, I did everything. I mean, you know, <laughs> just to show you work for you. She Is didn't that, bribe us. <laughs> is she under contract here? It's <laughs> yeah, it's, there's not a contract. <laughs> uh, you, you know, it's it's like we we love Francesca, so I don't want to. Yes. yes we love good. her, but there's something that happens. It's not like, like a plan. For example, uh, Francesca, she's a very now you met her in person. Mm. You see, she's very shy and. Uh, mm. It's not like a typical flashy actress, you know. So we didn't want to offer her paura because we thought that she couldn't face a role that is so demanding and to be, even not just for the movie, even to be naked in front of a crew for five weeks, it's not easy. And she's not the kind of girl that she would like to do that. Uh, so at the beginning, we, we did a lot of auditions and nobody was convincing us. And at one point, now I'm talking specifically of Paura, why Francesca is all Paura. We realized that to get the best from a role like that, you need to have an actress that 100% trusts you. So it was better to work with an actress that we were working yeah. a lot in that moment. So she knows what we want, we know the limit she can pass. And I think it was a great choice for that because I think. Francesca did quietly incredible things. Even you know, even in hygienic way, hygienic. Oh, yeah. yeah, because we she shot, mean, she we shot the movie. Yeah, no, she, we shot we shot the movie in a real in a, yes, basement, a basement, right, uh, full of rats and things. She was totally naked, uh, crawling. There's a one part she yeah. crawls, and for her, she just did it. And I think. I don't know if this is a declaration of love of a director and an actress, I think she did it for us, you know. I don't think she would do it mm. for anybody else. She didn't, she did it for the money, really. For the money, it is. No. <laughs> not I didn't think about that. <laughs> Sorry, I hate to ruin your illusion, but that's why she did it. No, no, no. <laughs> and also, you've got, I mean, I remember you told me that you wanted to sort of have the, 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 the guys, the three, the three boys, and they want you, you wanted them to sort of sound authentic. And of course, yeah. originally you were going to be planning to shoot in, in Turin, and then you were yeah, going to be yeah. filming. And so, you know, you're in Rome, and then they've got to have that authentic accent. So, you know, that, that sort of changed a lot too, didn't it, the actors? Yeah, yeah. We, we, at the beginning, we, we, the movie was written for Bologna. Mm -hmm. Then we said, let's go and shoot it in Torino. Then we decided to be home in Rome. Right. And we did three different cast, different castings because we, we co concentrated on Bologna first. I still have some Bologna actors sending me text <laughs> messages on my phone. Oh, you never asked me about that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and at the end, I think, uh, I, I just say something you know, summarized. It's like this movie has two characters that belong especially to the world of fantasy that are Sabrina and the Marchese, and three characters that, become, that belong to the world of reality. Mm. So for us it was important that the three boys look real for how unreal were the other two. So I think it's a contrast. Today I read, uh, that's funny, I read on the internet one of the first reviews that came out of Paola. And uh, one reviewer said this movie reminds me of Pasolini. I was wondering why. Uh, so, because you know, in Google it came out just uh, of Pasolini because, and it didn't say because. So, uh, how can how can this guy see, see Pasolini in our movie? So I pressed, and he said because it's a movie of uh, struggle of class. He said it's working class against upper class, uh, which in a way. Oh, I yeah, see that. Yeah. I can yeah. see that. Yeah, yeah, very good. I think it's an interesting lecture. This, yeah. And Pepe Sevilla, who plays the Marchese, of course. I mean, he's more well known in Italy as a singer. Yeah. And so why did you think of him as like this evil, nasty person? He's not a nasty person at all. It's because of his he's face. A very, <laughs> yes, he's a very nice person, very elegant, very... But that's this face. And when he, when he, when he see, he's the, uh, the brother of, of uh, Tony Servillo, you know, a very famous actor, but he's not an actor. Sometimes he acts, but he's not an actor. But when he sings, he, uh, he, he, he moves his face like... He, 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 it's scary. Yeah. It's scary. And so with everything, we can be a really good... Uh, bad guy. Bad guy. And, uh, and it's strange. It's, it's cold, you know? It's very cold without mm. feelings. And really like what... And, and when we met him, we were a bit... First of all, we were feeling strange because I, I don't know if you're familiar with the kind of singer 
Pepperton really is. It's a very classy Italian Napolitan song. Singer. Like, well, like Nico Tank for those t- that time. Mm, yeah, f- yes, but Gianni Morandi. More like Paolo Ponte. Paolo Ponte. Yeah, yeah, very classy. Very, yeah. So we were a bit scared on offering him the rudeness of a horror movie, you know? Right. Instead, he just plunged himself into the horror and he was doing decapitation scenes and, you know, without blinking an eye. And that was incredible for us because in Italy it's famous for elegance, you know? Mm. And, uh, and another thing is when we met him, he's the most gentle, nice person in the world. So we were a bit scared, you know, when you know him personally, say, oh, okay, this guy is not going to scare anybody, <laughs> he's too gentle. But then I think on, on, on screen, that gentleness kind of disappeared. Yeah. Mm. Listen, got to wrap it up, but tell me a bit more about the cop movie then. When did you start filming this and what's it called? And have you got a good title for it? That's what we need mm-hmm. to know. Yeah, you have to help us with titles. Yeah, know. I want to be on <laughs> Seriously, wait, are you going will to you film? Come? I will come. I promise. You're going to film in Rome? Yeah. Then I'm no, sure. in Napoli. Oh, okay. it's one hour from Rome. Okay, yeah, you can do it. Oh, God, but what about the traffic? If you are going to film in traffic, it's going to be oh, a nightmare. We want to shoot yeah. in traffic. In fact, for, the reason, for that reason, when we went to Napoli for scouting, the, uh, the, 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 the scouter, the, the people that work in cinema in Napoli, they tend to bring you when there's no traffic. They say, oh, we here, you can shoot. Right. No. <laughs> so, if you want to make a movie about Napoli, we should show the traffic. Shoot in the middle of the traffic jam. <laughs> so, we already yeah. put them in. They say, no, you can't do it. Yes! <laughs> so that, that then we want to go to the Camorra zones. Right. They say, no, let's do it to another zone. We are a little bit like that, you know. And it's a movie about, um, it's a cop comedy that we want to make it as action as we can, even if it's a little bit comedy. Uh, it, it has two different titles. Because there's a one title we prefer, the one title Luciano Martino prefers. Okay, well, I'll, I'll say this is a Sergio Martino. So yeah. now, we Luciano. 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 So, the, but the other, the one, one is in English, basically, so you, it's Inside Napoli. Inside Napoli. Inside Napoli. And the other one is Song in Napoli, which means in Napolitan dialect, I'm from Naples. Song, Song in Napoli. Song in Napoli. Song is not... I don't tell you which one is our favorite. Inside Napoli. Yeah. Inside Napoli. Napoli. Because it reminds me of like, you know, Roma, Città Bellianta and those sort of yeah, movies. Yeah, in fact, so. yeah. Because I think if one, it wants to be on that line a little bit. Well, that's what you need um, to do. Yeah. yeah. So we it. want to fight with the channel yeah, for so Inside Napoli. Well, everyone heard it first then. Inside Napoli. That's what we want to hear. Thank you very much. Thank you. Brothers. Thank you.